Hello friends. This week went by faster than expected. Uh, I had planned on filming this earlier in the week and well it got all the way to Friday. So here we are. Um, this week we are discussing Uncrossing, a book by my mentor uh, Katrina Rasbold and yeah let's get into it. The subtitle of Uncrossing is Identify, Cleanse, and Heal from Hexes, Curses, and Psychic Attacks. This book is all about how to, one, protect yourself, and two, to remove anything that other people attach to you. I found it, in comparison to what I learned face-to-face -face in her classes when I was studying with her, like all the same information is in it, it just is it's phrased slightly differently because it's in a book instead of face to face when you can ask questions. But all the same information is there. Um, she begins by giving an introduction of what does it mean to be under psychic attack in modern society and explains crossings, cursings, and how they're different and how realistically everyone gets crossed. You, you just, part of being a human being is people get upset and they throw their emotions at you. And if you don't take action to clean yourself off occasionally, it starts to weigh on you until you start suffering symptoms from it. Where a curse is a more deliberate action. It's using specific words and phrases to wish harm upon another person, whether that's physical harm, emotional harm, financial harm, doesn't matter, it's some kind of harm. So with that basis at the, the foundation of the book, then it goes into anecdotes and different methods of cleaning up those problems. Actually, I think I skipped a chapter, because there's also a chapter on uh, how to protect yourself, but I don't remember what order that's in. Oh, she also talks about self-crossing, which is something I had not considered before, but words have power, and our negative self-talk can sometimes curse ourselves if we're constantly talking down about ourselves it will affect us. So that's something to be aware of and to pay attention to. There's a chapter on identifying an attack, which I'm actually going to go to because if I remember correctly, there was a good quote in there. Da, 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 da. Oh, and I'm not going through all the information in the book. I'm just essentially, as per typical, sharing some details about the book, the things I really like about it, and how, because there's way more information in here than I just, just talked about. Ah, in the self-crossing section, since we just talked about that a little bit, let me grab Banish Damaging Language. There are four pages about how that will help heal you to banish your negative language, your damaging language, to structure your sentences on the things you want in your life rather than the things that you don't want in your life. Okay, part three, identifying an attack. Most simply stated, the chapter is called, Is This an Attack? The very first paragraph of this chapter says, Recognizing and verifying a psychic attack is a tricky undertaking, since the symptoms mimic medical conditions, substance abuse, and simple bad luck. This ambiguity of diagnosis allows curses, hexes, and crosses to persist, affecting prosperity and happiness, while hiding in plain sight disguised as ordinary conditions. Which I have definitely seen <laughs> in my life. And so, 
some of the methods of identification is what does an attack feel like? If any of you have experienced chronic health issues, you could probably, empathize isn't quite the right word, you've probably had similar experiences to me where some days you know it was just the day, it's what happened because of situations outside of your control, because of the weather, because of temperature, because of some other thing outside of your control. But then there are other days. In my own case, I have arthritis and I occasionally get migraines. There are days where I can look at it and go, that person just gave me a migraine. And it's not necessarily because of a, a, a magical attack. Sometimes it's just their music was just that right frequency that caused it to, to flip. There's a similar thing in magical diagnosis. Sometimes there are certain people who, if you are around, just cause bad things. For example, I had a friend who I do still love dearly and would really wish she could focus a bit more positively rather than negatively. I knew without a doubt if I went to see her, we would end up in an hours long vent fest. And that had an effect on me because of dwelling so much on the negative. So one of the things is to identify what an attack feels like. Because that wasn't an attack. That was just, I was sitting in it with someone for a prolonged period of time. There is a different emotional feeling to an attack in my experience. They're often sudden, unexplainable, and just... They don't make sense in comparison to your normal life, your normal experiences. So in the book, the way that Katrina says, in her experience, she could tell when something's an attack rather than just the consequences of living in a mortal body. To me, most psychic attacks feel pretty much the same. A generalized feeling of hopelessness, fear, frustration, and sometimes panic. Even the strongest, most confident people who fall under psychic attack may feel scared, violated, disempowered, and vulnerable. Often it is a extreme change to your normal mental state without explanation. For me, I didn't realize just how often I was being attacked by, well, crossed might be a better word. I was being crossed by certain family members until I stopped interacting with them and realized Huh. A lot of those things, now that I have my distance and I'm still doing all the same cleansing, purifying things for myself, it's not happening anymore. Uh, the next chapter is managing the attack. Here's how you do stuff. Oh, and for comparison's sake, um, this part of the book, we still haven't started talking about how to manage attacks yet. We're halfway through the book. Because you need to have that underlying information of just what is an attack? How do you, how do you know the difference? Managing the attack. What can we do? This chapter begins with uh, this quote of, 
When you get to the critical point of seriously considering the idea that you are under psychic attack, it is important that you respond quickly, always remembering that if you are not under attack and treat the symptoms as if you are, you will not do any damage. If anything, the removal of negative energies around you, including stress and anxiety, could cause you to have greater clarity about your circumstances and provide better insight for how to manage your difficulties. One of the reasons I love Katrina so much and why I love this book so much, you literally can do no wrong with any of the information in this book. If someone comes to you and they're not under psychic attack, they're not, they've not been cursed, any of the things in this book that you do for them, it's not going to hurt them. Absolutely nothing in this book will hurt somebody. But what it will do is remove anything that might be inconveniencing, damaging, traumatizing them. So what can I do? I love how simple she makes it. One, identify. Figure out what's actually happening to the best of your ability. Use whatever method of divination, of, um, yeah, I guess divination, any of your talents or skills to identify spiritual things. Two, objectify. Lose your emotionality about it. If you are seriously trying to heal someone, if you get wrapped up in your own emotions, you're not going to be able to make the best decisions for them. Three, banish. Really simple. So in her words, identify, list symptoms, determine threat level, and name the problem. Two, objectify, lose emotion, come up with a plan, and go into management mode. Three, banish, remove anything that does not support your goal. So she also provides a very clear example. Identify. Victim has ongoing misfortune, malaise, and thoughts of self-harm that may be a psychic attack. Two, objectify. I set up a sacred space and cleanse the victim. Three, banish. We do an energetic cleansing to remove the attack, then reparations towards healing begin. I have found this very simple method incredibly effective. And you can use so many different tools, so many different processes to accomplish those three things. For me, I have a lot of... I It's not so much that I see things, it's that I'm just aware of them when they're in my presence. I suppose you could call it claircognizance. And with my Reiki training, it's also, I can, I can feel where the energy is off. I can feel where things are blocking the natural state of their spirit, of the chi within their body, whichever phrasing you want to use. That doesn't necessarily give me all of the information of who did it or why are they suffering the problem, but it does tell me there's something wrong in your knee. There is some sort of energetic blockage in your knee. So then we work on it. Uh, for me, I usually am using Reiki, so that would be directing Reiki to that spot breaking down that blockage and removing it from their body. I'm also trained in how to do Olympias because I learned from Katrina. So I also know how to do egg cleanses and a variety of other types of cleansing techniques. Depending on what's going on, one or the other may feel more appropriate. And so I do what feels more appropriate. Alrighty, after we identify 
objectify, and banish. We then have a long series of other things to do. So healing after the psychic attack, which is the last chapter, which give me just a second. Well, second to last chapter. Healing after the attack. There's a portion about uh, recuperation. Uh, just like after a major physical surgery, you need time to recover. So take the time. Uh, some suggestions that she gives are offer the person you just cleansed some tea, juice, or something to pep them up a bit if needed. Some just want water. Lots of water. Washing their hands in cool water, holding dark stones, and eating non-sugary food can help ground any excess energy. The victim may want to sit for a little while, put their head back, and let their energy readjust. Some are excited, energized, and very chatty. Taking the time to be responsive to the victim's needs after the cleansing is an important part of the healer's participation in the process. Just like in the medical field, there is a certain amount of aftercare that you need to provide for your for your clients, for those you serve as a healer. And I have definitely learned everyone's different. Some people just want to be cleansed and then just run headlong to face whatever the problem was, which I do not recommend. Need to catch your breath first. <laughs> and put some protections in place before you just run headlong into battle again. Some of the things that are referenced are mojos, protective amulets, charms, some sort of... You know they're just going to go back into the thick of it because it, it's life. Help arm them with something to protect themselves. Help teach them the self-care to help take care of themselves. And then there's actually way, way more information in here of other different methods. But again, this is just a, a quick review of the book, not so much uh, an expose on it. So my personal feelings about this book, clearly uh, I'm biased because I studied with her and uh, Katrina is a friend. so. I love this book. I highly recommend it. It puts into clear, easy terms, like the whole kitten caboodle of what's a psychic attack, what's just life happening, and arms people with the vocabulary to actually identify things, to then take action it demystifies a lot of, just a lot of metaphysical, I guess metaphysical war might be a right way to put it, in, in general. I, having both read the book and studied with her personally, I would definitely prefer studying with her personally, because then you, you get a lot more information when you're able to just ask questions. But this is the closest you're going to get if you don't live close enough and if she's not offering classes at that time. Um, because I know she's kind of, at the moment, on again, off again, and, and if there's enough interest, she sometimes still offers classes. But um, she's, she's moving more into a semi-retired state. So <laughs> uh, I feel very blessed to have had the time to study with her that I did. I would rate this a 5 out of 5 book. It is through the lens predominantly of Grujaria, just be forewarned. But as I've said in other videos, there's a huge crossover between Brujaria and Hoodoo and other conjure techniques, and this will work just as well. There is no forbidden knowledge in this book. It's all... I, sh I wouldn't say beginner-friendly. 
but it is all something anyone can do for themselves or for someone else. Definitely want to practice instead of just jump headlong into like dealing with possessions and things, but for the normal everyday things, this book will will arm you for for anything that you encounter in your normal day-to-day -day life. It will also warn, I shouldn't say warn, it will prepare you for a lot of the less than normal things that happen in day-to-day -day life. Because, let, let's be real, the world's crazy. There's a lot of angry people out there and far too many people are really trigger happy and are slinging off curses and hexes indiscriminately instead of thinking about, is this a justified action? So there's my very rambly review of Uncrossing. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, leave a like, comment. If you really liked it, subscribe. And until next time, walk in the light, my friends.